Welcome back to another lesson, ladies and gentlemen. As promised, in this lesson we will be starting to talk about particles and particle systems in Unity. But before we can do anything with them, first we need to understand what they are and how they work. Almost everything that we create in Unity is some kind of game object, such as a character, an obstacle and so on. A particle is also a game object, however, it's much different from other game objects. For example, let's look at the character. In a 3D game a character would be made out of meshes, and in a 2D game he would be made out of sprites or one sprite. Meshes and sprites are perfect for representing solid objects like a character. However, if we want to represent something that's moving, something dynamic, for example, moving water, smoke, lightning, explosions, fire, flames and so on, that's when we need to use particles. Particles are not always necessary in game development, however, they almost always make the game look a lot better, so we are going to use particles in this game to give it a bit more polish and to make it more dynamic. In a 2D game, particles are also represented by sprites, however, instead of one or a few sprites, we have hundreds or thousands of sprites that are tiny and that are moving together to create a dynamic picture for us. Particles have a lifespan that is predetermined and we can also determine in which direction we want them to spawn and things like that. Particles have a lot of options in Unity, so I'm not going to go over all of the options, but instead I will just explain how to create the particles that we need in this game. Because I don't want to waste too much time talking just about particles. However, I do plan to publish a few bonus lectures in the future explaining how to create some specific particle effects in Unity such as thunder, smoke, flames, and explosions. Let's get into Unity and see how we actually create some particles. Go ahead and right click in the hierarchy tab, go to effects, and choose particle system to create a new particle system object. We can see that it immediately plays, we can control the simulation using this little box here, we can pause it, change the speed, for example if we want to see it in slow motion, and things like that. In the inspector tab we have so many options for particles, but we will only need a few of them now, so don't worry. Before we delve into these options, let's select the particle system, and move it down to our player game object. The next thing that we want to do is to make it a child of the player, so that it always follows the player around. If you press play and jump with the player, the particle should follow up. Next, let's rename it. This particle effect is going to be the effect that occurs whenever the player collects a star. In the original game, when you collect a point, you have many little stars flying around your player game object. So we are going to do the same thing. Therefore, we will name this particle system Star Particle. Now it's time to move into options. First, let's adjust the duration, since we don't want the particles to play for 5 seconds. We want it more like 0 0.5 seconds. After that we want to disable looping, since it will only occur once whenever we collect a star. After that we want to adjust the start lifetime to 0 0.2. And also I forgot to mention, if you're not sure what any of these options do, whenever you hover over them it will give you a brief explanation so you get the idea. The next thing that we want to adjust is the start speed. We want to reduce it from 5 to 1.4. After that we also want to reduce the size to 20% or 0.2. The next thing that we want to change is the scaling mode. Right now it's set to local and we want to change it to shape. And the final thing in this tab is to disable the play on awake option. If we quick simulate, we should see a few little particles flying around the game object. 
That seems good for now, however, we still need to adjust a few things. We also don't want the particles to be in the shape of a circle, but rather in the shape of a star. So let's go ahead and adjust that. If we scroll all the way to the bottom here in the Inspector tab, we can see a set of options called Render that's enabled. If we expand it, we can see a lot more options. This is the material that our particle system is using right now, and if we expand it down here, we can see what it actually looks like. It's kind of a circle, so we need to change that to a star. To create a material, right click in the project tab and choose create material. The material is going to be called star material and we also don't want it to be in the scenes folder so we'll drag it out to the bottom. Select your star material and go to the inspector tab. We need to change the shader mode from standard to particles and choose additive. Now we need to add a texture to this material. However, it can't be a regular sprite like this because it only takes these whole sprites. And that's something that I didn't realize at the beginning of this tutorial, so I had to create a new sprite later on. And I have it on my desktop right here in this color switch sprites folder. I added it here so you will be able to download it as well before starting with the project. But right now I'm going to go ahead and drag this into Unity to import it. It's going to be in the sprites folder. Go back to your star material and click select in this texture box. Now you will be able to see the star sprite. Double click it to select it. Once that is done, go back to your star particle, scroll down, and we need to take the star material and drag it into the material tab, instead of default particle. If we scroll down to the bottom and expand this now, we should see the shape of a star right here. That means that our particle should look different now. Let's click on simulate and find out. Ok, for now it looks good, however we still need to adjust a few more options. Go back to your star particle, and in the renderer tab we need to adjust the maximum particle size. From 0.5 we'll reduce it all the way to 0.2. After that, open up the shape options, and this is kind of a visual representation of the particle's movement. We want to change it from cone to a box. And we'll also drag it to the middle of our player game object. After that is done, we'll set the randomized direction to 0.3 and the spherized direction to 1. Let's see how it looks like now. I feel like there should be way more stars being emitted. So let's go into the emission options and change the rate over time from 10 to 35. This is basically how many stars are going to be created per second. If we click simulate now, we can see that looks a lot better. Once again, you can go ahead and play with these options to see what each of them does. There are really a lot of those. It seems complicated at first, but trust me, once you start playing with these options, it's really fun to see what you can combine to create some new effects. Ok, so now that that is done, we will need a script that will trigger these particles to play. The first question that comes to mind is, when do we want them to play? Since we already know that we want them to play when the player touches the star game object and collects a point, we already have a script that handles that, so we can just add the particles in that script. That script is located on the player game object and it's called player collision script. Right click it and choose edit script to open it up in Visual Studio. Let's see the code first. This is whether the player has collided with the obstacle, so that's not now. This is the color changer, and at the bottom we should have 
a part of the code that handles the player collision with the point. So this is where we'll be writing our code. But first let's go back to the beginning and create some new variables. It's going to be a new public variable of the type particle system and we can name it star particle. We will be targeting our star particle system with this variable and after that is done it's very easy to actually play it when we want. So just go back to this part of the code and after the star game object is destroyed we want to reference the variable that we just introduced. So star particle I spelled it wrong. Dot play. And after that, open and close the brackets because this is a function. And that's everything. Now, whenever the player collides with a point, it will add plus one to the score text, it will destroy the star that the player collided with. And after that it will play the particle that we just created. Make sure you save this. And if we go back to Unity. Now we just need to attach the star particle right here. So take the star particle system and drag it into place. Let's see if it works. Ok, so I'm actually really happy with these results. Now that you know how particles actually work in Unity, in the next lesson we are going to be creating some more particles and make the game look a lot better. So stay tuned.